Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Yard Coach. Sure appreciate you finding the channel and spending a little time listening and learning. You know, every week we bring to you landscape education, specifically targeting DIYers out there. DIY homeowners who really want to save a few dollars and still get professional results. Hey, this week I'm talking to you about a topic that's really, really hits home to me because it's pretty much about me but it could apply to you. It's about taking a hobby, taking a hobby and making it a career. Something that definitely crossed my path many years ago. So come along with me today, listen to what I have to say and maybe something that I do have for you will ring true for you or somebody that you know. Thanks for joining, let's get going. Hey, I'm Matt, you can call me coach. Every Friday I bring with me landscape DIY education, concepts and theories, ideas and solutions, so you guys can go out and tackle a landscape project yourself, get professional results, save a whole lot of money in the process, and in this day and age, be a lot more self-reliant. Man, after a 20 plus year career in the green industry, I'm bringing with me a lot of knowledge and experience that I wanna share with you guys the new, modern, educated, self-reliant homeowner of today. You know, I want to start off with a couple of things. You know, uh, there's a couple old sayings out there, and that is that, you know, if you, you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Well, specifically to this week, I'm talking about if you really love gardening, if you really love landscaping, and you turn it into a career, well, you still love it as a hobby. It's, uh, it's food for thought, it really is. You know, hobbies are defined as activity that is done in one's leisure time, basically for pleasure. And there's another one that comes to mind and very applicable to this, and that's a catharsis. You know, a catharsis is a, is a, a purgation or a purification of one's emotions through an art or some other form of release. You know, for many years as a younger man, I had, uh, I had hobbies and I had catharsis, you know, I, and many of them I still do today because I really enjoy them. But some of them, I didn't turn into a business. I really love fishing, really love hiking and backpacking, and I really loved gardening and landscaping, especially with all the teaching that I got, you know, in a, one of the first green industry jobs I ever had, Navalee's Nursery up there in Northern California. As I understand it now, after you know being on this earth for a while, I understand that those hobbies were really cathartic releases. They really were. As I entered into marriage and fatherhood, kind of a stressful job, you know, I, I really kind of took to that gardening and landscaping thing unknowingly in my 20s that it really was a, a labor of love and something I really enjoyed doing. I really enjoyed thinking something out, planning something out, designing, and then installing and executing a project of many, many sizes over the years. And I realized, hey, you know, I really felt better. I really felt better after doing some of these things. And then I had to go back to my nine to five at the time, which was not the green industry at the time. And in doing so, I found that my uh, designing skills, my practical application of landscape techniques and stuff, they really kind of got sharpened over the years, especially in my first two houses. You know, at the time, my, uh, my responsibilities were, uh, I don't know, I had a couple of new kids, home, mortgage, you know, car payments and everything, and all the financial responsibility kind of fell on my shoulders. And then coupled with that rather stressful job that I had, oh my gosh, you know, I really enjoyed getting out there in the yard because honestly, I really couldn't take elaborate vacations or a lot of time off at that particular part of my life. I can remember literally working 40, 45 hours a week and it was really a blue collar, paycheck to paycheck type of job. Money was tight, a lot. Well, it got to the point, especially at about my second home that I had, where I decided, you know something, I'm, I got to implement, I got to implement some uh, secondary income here. And I only knew one other, you know, one other trade, one other industry in my world. So I turned to it. I looked to uh, open up a small landscape design business. 
And so I went out there and I did the, the advertisement and, you know, I put out some flyers, walked some of the newer neighborhoods and, and tried to ply my wares. I went a couple of nurseries that were in the area and put out cards and stuff. And lo and behold, lo and behold, I had found myself a small business, which when the phone started ringing, I kind of realized, okay, what have I done to myself? I already work in 40, 45 hours a week or more, and now I've got this to do too. But you know something? It was that same catharsis. It was that same hobby, only now I was making a few bucks at it. And after a couple, three months, after doing a few designs, I suddenly found, had a couple, couple ducats in my wallet now that I didn't have before. I had a little bit of a, a reserve starting to build and I was finding myself at ease with doing these designs again. And I hadn't done them in a while. And I said, son of a gun, I found, I've kind of found Nirvana here. And I didn't put that many more hours into it. Maybe, you know, another 10 hours, 15 hours. And I had a few extra bucks. And I thought, hey, this is pretty good. Well, when I moved to the Central Valley from the Bay Area, and I continued in the same full-time career I was in, I kind of let the, obviously I wasn't in the same area, so I kind of let the business wane for about two to three years, maybe four years. I was really concentrating on the new job, trying to, trying to do a good job there. But you know something? The same money woes kept coming up. Anyway, I started up the new business again. And I started out just with designing for about the first six to eight months. But I found that there was such a demand such a demand for people who had construction, landscape construction skills, that I started to acquire a few tools, started to acquire the correct vehicles and trailers, and before, before I knew it, I had a landscape construction business. And at the time, at the time, still doing full-time work, I could only do it on weekends. And that was, I don't know, I didn't think it was professional as I thought it could be. So I gave it about a year, maybe a year and a half. And the business was coming on so strong that I was turning work away, but still doing a lot of designing. And finally, I would kind of had enough of the full-time career. And I, I separated and went into the business full-time. So I took that hobby, that catharsis, that love of the horticultural world, and I turned it into a business. So. $64,000 question. Was it worth it? Was it the right thing to do? And did it ruin the hobby? Well, I'll tell you this. Unequivocally, absolutely, yes. It changed the hobby and it changed the catharsis. Because like some other industries that are out there, and I'm not picking on any one of them, I'll just randomly pick a few. Maybe the mechanic doesn't have all the cars working at home. Not always, but sometimes. Maybe the plumber has a leak under the kitchen sink. Maybe the roofer needs to put a new roof on. Because why? Because after doing it 40 to 60 hours a week, about the last thing a person wants to do is to continue to do the same stuff when he gets home and goes, oh my God, what a day, or what a week, or whatever. So, as time went by, I kinda, I kinda found the hobby turning into the business and it took away for parts of it it took away the fun it certainly took away the cathartic release for a while because I was trying to get going and after I'd separated from a from a guaranteed paycheck with benefits and retirement and all that other stuff now was all on my shoulders to go out and find the work to go out and find the insurance, to get properly licensed, to find the clients and actually land the job. It's one thing for the phone to ring. It's another thing for the cash register to ring by getting the job itself. It's a totally different dynamic, it really is. And running the business side of things is very right brainish, and doing the creative designs and stuff, which was still the love that I had for the business that I had, was very, very the creative left brain side. So after years and years, I look back on it and I say, well, was it worth it? Yes, 
Yes, honestly, it was worth it. And many people say, well, you know, they're thinking as they're watching this, well, you know, do you, do you make a living at it? Do you do well at it? I was in Northern California, probably one of the more expensive parts of our country and maybe expensive globally, I don't know. But landscape contractors worth their salt, the ones that were accountable, the ones that were good, the ones who were diligent, and the ones who had the right people, we did well. We did very well. And I had taken a salary of full-time work, although no benefits with what I was doing, and I quadrupled my salary probably after about two years. Now, totally different kind of work though, totally different. And when you know everything, you know, kind of resides with you, the harder you work, you know, the better off you're gonna be, a better provider that you're gonna be, a better businessman you're going to be, all because you have this hobby that you turned into a business and you took the love of that hobby and you made it a good business. So in essence, I took, uh, I took something that helped me get rid of all the trials and tribulations and stresses that everyday life brought on you. You know, it may not sound the most manly thing, but I'll tell you what, nothing gave me more pleasure than to go out in the front or backyard, to be able to prepare up a bed and to turn the soils and amend the soils and, and replant annual color and other stuff and really make my home kind of a show place. It was very much, very much that cathartic release I always looked for. But you know something? In the green industry, you can still have that. There was many times when I was uh, at Weed Patch Ranch and creating that monster that I designed and built. It was, uh, it was hard, hard work. It was very difficult work, but it was also very rewarding because when you're doing something like this, not like some other industries that are out there, there's a lot of tangible results that you see. When you start in the morning at a job site, or as I did maybe at Wheat Patch Ranch, you have something that looks X in the morning, and by the time you're done in the afternoon or evening, it's improved. And you can look back and you said, my efforts actually resulted in something. Some jobs out there, like my previous career, it was kind of like shoveling sand against an incoming tide. You never really knew that your production was really making a difference, especially on an individual level. So when you have gardening and personal landscaping as one of your hobbies, you know, you don't have that thing called uh, business competition. You don't have anything but your own pace, your own ideas, and you can go to the nursery on a Saturday morning or go to the box stores or wh whatever you're planning on getting, and you can get those items, bring them home, plant them, build it, install it, do whatever you're gonna do, and you can do it under your own clock, under your own time frame, and on your own schedule. It drastically changes when you take that hobby and you make it a business, especially being a contractor. Now you have things like schedules, you have budgets, you have managerial responsibilities as far as people, uh, administrative costs, equipment to acquire and maintain, and that is not always the case when it's just your little slice of heaven. There are some pluses with being self-employed through a hobby that you created a business into. Number one for me, I didn't do a lot of landscape maintenance. I did it early on because times were tight, but I soon migrated away from that. And I did that because number one, it wasn't that rewarding. And number two, it tied you to a schedule and a route that dictated what you had to do every week and every day. I went into the construction route. I would do designing for people, and then I would do construction for people. And oftentimes when I got done with a two week job or a one month job, I would schedule things accordingly. So maybe I had a couple of weeks, even three weeks in between jobs where I could catch up on other designs or hey, I could take a small downtime, a small vacation, and not be hurt by it. 
especially as the business got truly established and I really was grounded in the local community where I worked. It was also nice once you got established that you could learn to say no. You know, when you had tire kicker customers, when you had people that were uh, less than cooperative or had kind of devious intentions as far as how they were going to treat you or treat your work or treat a contract, you could learn to, you could walk away. You could refund money if you had to, or basically you just wouldn't take the job. And I strongly urge it. It's one of the things contractors fall, kind of fall into this trap, fall into the trap about money, money, money. I have to take more jobs. I have to make more money. I've got to get more people. I've got to grow, grow, grow. And in the landscaping world, that's okay for some. It was not okay for me. And the reason was is I had a great business mentor very early on who told me, Coach, if you're going to do this long term, stay really small or get really big, but don't be in the middle. In the state of California where I was at, the middle-sized companies just got their asses kicked in so many ways. The income wasn't as good and taxes and all the other things that came to bear on a California company um, really didn't allow <laughs> for a lot of growth and a lot of fulfillment. So I stayed very, very small. In the end, I was so small, the whole company was me with occasional day laborers as I needed them. But there was generally me, Kanga, and that was about it. And I took jobs according to what I knew I was capable of doing. In these uncertain times that we are in, I think it's really important whether you're seriously considering it or having in the back of your head. Always have kind of a plan B. What if your job was phased out next month? Will you have a hobby or a talent or a trade that you could turn to? Would you be able to take the trade you're in and just roll it over to another company? Or is the whole industry that you're in being phased out because of technology or outsourcing or whatever? It's always good to have that plan B. Hey, something, something to think about. If you have somebody in your circle of influence that's maybe thinking about going from, uh, you know, planting flowers in their backyard and having one of the nicer yards that they want to maybe make it a business, I'd love to talk to them. I'd you could have them email me. The other thing is, is if you're thinking about this seriously, you might want to consider the ebook and Homescape 1.0, my digital course, that can really teach you how to landscape at a professional level. It will not cover the business aspect. That's going to be on you. Anyway, that's what I have for you today, guys. Taking a hobby and making it a career. There's some really big pluses and there's a couple minuses. You just have to judge for yourself. Whatever you do, however you go, make sure that you do a step-by-step -step thorough business plan. Make sure you put a few dollars away before you uh, go leaping off into it full time. If you can save up a half a year's salary worth and then try it, maybe on a part-time basis, and then maybe make the final leap of faith like I did. I really appreciate you sticking with me. Please give me a, a thumbs up and a like. Consider subscribing. Take a look at some of the other videos I have, and I hope you learn something each and every time you hit that play button. I'll catch you guys next Friday and every Friday. If you're on the move, don't forget about the podcast, and I'll catch up with you guys next week. As always, to your landscape success. You guys take care. Bye for now.